Alright guys, welcome back to another M Creator tutorial. Today what we're going to be covering is the script that I made for spawn eggs, custom ones, and it allows you to basically spawn an entity using an item, and it calculates pretty much all the math-based stuff for making sure that the entity has room to spawn. Um, I added support for water, land, and air entities, as well as the... Uh, tag support for knowing what valid blocks it can spawn in, which is really handy for adding your own mod blocks, custom mod blocks, etc. And um, a few other things like um, basically if there is uh, a block underneath. So there's three different blocks here or three different categories for this particular script. The only thing that it needs is the tag, which requires um, basically your blocks that it will be spawning in or allowed to spawn in. So things like mushrooms, torches, flowers. Uh, what else is here? We have grass types and bushes, like dead bushes, cobwebs, sugar cane, saplings. Uh, this one is for the air entity, so we needed air and cave air as well. And then a little bit further over, we have mushrooms, torches, redstone torches, vines, uh, nether plants, cave plants. So those are all the different things that I put in this particular tag that would allow for the entity. One thing in common with all these is all entities can walk through them. So that's really important because you don't want to put something like planks in here because then it will basically get stuck and take damage. So anything that is transparent that they can basically walk through or a player can walk through, this should be fine to add. You might have different ones based on the actual um, ecosystem. So if it's a water entity, you might have fluid rather than air and you might have water plants rather than the plants that you find on the surface. Air entities are very similar to land entities in that regard, so a lot of the things that you'll find with air entities will also be for land entities. Um, you can also put it under your own namespace or another namespace such as Forge, Minecraft, or whatever, but it needs to be a block tag and it needs to have a registry uh, name or the path. So basically, if you're putting it under a path, you do a slash and then the name of the tag. All right, so with that being said, you just need an item after that. So you set your item texture. You can set all these different properties however you want. I suggest putting it under spawn eggs so you actually can use it to test. And then you will have food you can set that as up as you want and all those are the same the only trigger that you need to worry about for this entire project is when right clicked on block for the item itself at the block position so in that you'll have your um, actual script now you might be notice that we're using x y and z dependencies world dependencies and direction dependencies those are really important for the script so let's quickly open up the script which we can do that through here. And the only things that you need to worry about are what you see on the screen right now. So basically the entity radius, the entity height, if that requires solid blocks underneath the entity for spawning. In this case, it's a flying entity, so we don't need to worry about that. And basically the spawnable blocks tag. So basically the tag that I just showed you, which would consist all the, of all the blocks that it could spawn in. Uh, you put your namespace for the tag here. In this case, it's Minecraft. And then the registry for the tag itself, including the path. So if you do something like, um, I don't know, um, eggs, and then a slash, then you would put that in here as well. But don't put the colon between this or at the end of this or anything like that, the colon's already taken into consideration. So all you really need is the registry and the tag name. Everything else is calculated in this block right here, which is the main body of the script. And I added notes all throughout here so you guys can learn from what's going on and stuff. Uh, the other part, what you're gonna need to do is you're going to need to update the spawn entity and select which one you want to basically generate from here. So if you're going with a goat or something like that, I don't know, I don't think goats fly, but you know, if you're 
going with a goat or something, then you have to update each one of these for that particular entity. This consists of each rotation for the entity. So this one's the up direction. If you right click on the surface of the up top of the block, bottom, the north side, east side, south side, and west side. So this is all calculated and figured out through the script up here. Uh, don't edit the math part because that's going to automatically center the entity based on the radius and well not so much the height but the radius for sure so once you set the radius the radius is going to be determined on the size of the entity of the hitbox so basically what we need to do is we need to go open up a living entity we'll just go ahead and look at the first tab under visual and then you might see bounding box so this is where the um, data that you need for your height and your radius comes in. So one thing to know with a radius is it should be always an uneven number. Um, a 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, and so on. So it always should be a uneven number. Uh, this is because the script in here actually um, goes by uneven numbers it needs the math to set up for uneven numbers so it needs to be an uneven number for that however that won't be a problem if you have extra room uh, for your entity uh, as long as it doesn't take damage within that hitbox zone so if you look under the entity model bounding box there will be some help text underneath here which is width slash depth height shadow size mounted entity y offset so that's based on each one of these um check boxes so what you're going to need to do is calculate basically the size of the entity so the radius this is under one block right so uh, we don't need to worry about the width so much we can fit that under a one size because that's going to work just fine the other thing that we have is a size of 1.8. So that's just under 2. So we could go ahead with 2. These need to be solid numbers, not decimal points, these two blocks here. So make sure that you size it up correctly. Now, if this hitbox was something like 1 or something like that, we might want to go ahead with a size of 3. So it would be a little bit larger but it would be allow us to make sure that the entity doesn't take any damage. All right, so the next thing is requires solid block underneath or under. So basically, if this is true, what will happen is in the script here at the very top, what will happen is after you right click on the side of a block, it will determine basically if it can basically generate if there's a block or not. So if this is true, this part of the script will run from it will require it to be true and that there will be a solid up side of the block at the very location of the um, basically the right click event. So if it's false like it is now, then what would happen is it won't require that and it will still run the script. Uh, when this part in here, you don't really need to worry about this whole entire procedure. Just know that all this is calculating the size. It's testing for the tag to see if there is any blocks that is not part of that tag block that you have up here. So that again, your tag should be basically your Minecraft namespace or your mod namespace or forge namespace or another mods namespace, and then followed by the registry for that tag. And it's really simple because this is all calculated through all this entire script. There's absolutely nothing you need to configure in here. Um, I did add notes just so you know what's going on, but that's pretty much the extent of it. So basically this does it for each direction. If it finds a block that is not um, in that list, it's going to cancel event by turning this variable to true. So cancel event equals true. And that will break out of the loop. And if none of these things actually run, what it's going to do is it's going to basically cancel the event as well. This is really important for making sure that there's room for spawning the actual entity, which is the last thing that we need to cover, which is just setting your entities up through these little boxes right here. So just click on it and then select the entity and there you go, you'll be all set up. Just make sure that they're all set the same 
or you'll have different entities based on different sides, which could work if you wanted to do that, but um, it might be a little bit different based on the size of the entity. So keep that in mind. All right, so that's basically the script. Now let's go into game and actually see how it all works. I'll explain the uh, required face, uh, required solid block underneath a little bit more and we'll get to that so let's go in i got a few different examples to test for you um there are a few different spawn eggs that i have here and uh, one for each one that we i basically created for an example in the workspace so basically we have an air entity um the best way we should probably cover is how the placement works so for a single entity Basically, when you right click on the side, it will spawn right next to the block. So that will be a radius of one. If you have like a radius of three, then what's going to happen is it will give some buffer zone between the block that you right click on and the exterior of the block. So basically, what will happen is if you right click on this side, it'll test for this area in here. And everything else is basically um, calculated. The orange is where the entity would actually spawn. So directly in the center right here. Um, if you're clicking underneath the block, then what will happen is it will require the height. So if it is something like two in height, like we required, you would need something like that with a radius of whatever radius you have. So basically you would need to right click on it there and it would test and automatically place it directly under like that. All right, so, and if you're placing it on top, then obviously it'll be right directly in the center and it will still require the height for the error. Uh, when it comes down to the actual placement for the um, solidness, we can basically try to right click on here. You can see that it's not going to be spawning the entity because this is not a solid block. We can even try clicking on that and it won't work. We can click on that, however, and you can see that it will generate the entity directly next to the block. Uh, water entities, um, we can basically spawn them in uh, the in the actual seagrass because that will work. And you can see I just clicked on the block underneath, not that part, or it will spawn it kind of, well, I don't think it will actually spawn it there, but we can click on other blocks like this and you can see that it's spawning naturally like it should. And then for air entities, this is a little bit different. Air entities will kind of kick in after a while. They'll fall a little bit and then they'll start flying, but they don't take fall damage. So you don't need to worry about them uh, getting hurt. So that's why I have the, the block condition can, uh, disabled. You can also like click on sides of the cliffs or whatever. Uh, for them to actually, you can see that he didn't require a block under directly underneath him. So that's basically that part. Land entities, um, again, those are based on the side that you click on. This is only a one block radius, so they spawn right next to the block like this. And we can place it like that and he'll spawn under there or on top. So it works for all different sizes, sides. But, uh, for example, if you try to place a fish right over this block here, it won't actually work because it's stairs and it's facing up. If it's facing down, it will spawn. So that, that part will work. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, for water entities, we should probably just cover the tags quickly of how I have these ones set up. And then I think you're pretty much good to download the project workspace. I don't think this will actually like become outdated anytime soon, if at all, because it's pretty straightforward stuff, mostly math and stuff like that. But in the case that it does, I'll let me know and I'll update it, but chances are it won't for a really long time. So let's go into M creator and we'll just cover the different blocks and the tags. Uh, the only difference is between the air and land one with the water one. So we already covered the the air one and the other one that we need to cover. Land is pretty much the exact same. I think I've basically added all the same blocks. Uh, let me just check here. Yeah, it looks like they're all the same up to, yeah, they're all the same here as well. And the only different one is the water one. So we have water blocks instead of air. We have the kelp, 
uh, which is kelp and then kelp plant. The, the short seagrass, the tall seagrass, we have the um, sea sponge or sea pickle, whatever it is. We have the dead uh, coral and we have live coral of that type. And then we got the other types of coral, the other types of coral type and the single one. I'm not sure what all, of the, all these are called, but then we have the other one over here is the alive version. So all the different types of coral, uh, the sea pickle, seagrass, kelp, and water, all three types of water. And that's basically the system that I used for the actual um, water entity. So that's all you need to know. I'll make sure to provide not only the textures for these eggs, but the uh, entire workspace as well as each procedure that I set up. So you guys can easily install and set up all your custom spawn eggs. So hopefully that helps. If you're new to my channel, don't forget to subscribe, comment down below, rate the video, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Peace out.